Oh. Welcome to a simple class today, hopefully. To simply contemplate inside. Maybe not as explosive as yesterday, but <laughs> or as intense, but Swastya. Um, simply happy to exist by yourself. It's a nice way to start this class. After a class like yesterday, where we, we teach the fundamentals of swastya at, at a profound level, of course, then we realize how human we are. How many things so tied up inside us. Detachments. It's good. So now we make peace. Just contemplate simple peace now. Freedom, peace. Today that's what we do, contemplation. <laughs> we contemplate peace. The approach is not shanti kind of peace, but uh, swastya that will result in peace. I am with myself, I exist purely as I am, that's good. We can have a feeling of, you know, the good feeling part of yesterday. I'm grateful for every opportunity I have. To emancipate myself. Yeah, let's do that. In every event I have the chance to live, I'm grateful and peaceful. Today, let's not go in deep Visantara. Let's not go deep in crushing our own guts. <laughs> Swastya. Life will come to remind you how much you lose everything. It's okay. You only lose what you believe you had anyway. Otherwise, you still have yourself. <laughs> so let's be peaceful today. Let's be grateful. Happy. Simple. Contemplate your body. Be grateful you live in your body. And just be peaceful. With patience, your consciousness will go into your body. We're not rejecting the body. By, by believing in freedom, by profoundly integrating swastya, 
let's not reject the body, let's embrace it. A reflex of the ego is to, in French we would be saying, rebarbative. I don't even know if it exists in English. Rebarbative, like reacting by complaining harshly, pretending that we're not affected. Like, if I don't own it, then screw that, I don't want to even see it. You know, like the ego does that, the human does that. So as we contemplate, we don't own anything in nature. Then the arrogance of the ego to, to not have to face the suffering of that, of our attachment, let's say, well, then I'll just give everything away and even my body, I'll get rid of it. You know, there's, there's this little childish reaction. I don't care about anything anymore then. So let's not have that harsh reaction. Let's incarnate in the body, knowing it still belongs to nature. It's the joy of living in the present moment, grateful for having a body and the pleasure and the pain that sometimes rises. We're happy to live. We we'll try to we'll try not to see this little childish reaction. Well, if I can't have everything I want and own it, then I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. I, you know, I don't. This little childish reaction of screw that. Let's, let's gently see without panicking in a profound state of hell, okay? <laughs> Just see if you're a little bitch. Yeah. A veces estoy una zorra. <sighs> All right. Come on. The focus is mainly in making peace and not being too capricious. Just take the body as it is. Just be happy to have it. It's a patient practice today. We contemplate gently. And we uh, try to be honest with ourselves. It is confusing for the human, the idea that even our body belongs to nature. Well, if it doesn't belong to me, then I cannot have it. No, that's not how it works. We could say also your body does not belong to nature. It belongs to no one you just happen to have it you just happen to have it it's like that it's confusing the words that we can use to talk that cannot really transmit the feeling that everything is one with brahma anyway and now that part of you as a consciousness is experiencing a part of this flesh in nature and it's all one stream so nothing belongs to anything and any, that's another way to say it and let's just make peace with it be grateful.
when you when you eat your favorite cake you're quite happy to have that body when we feel the texture of our favorite clothing ourselves If we didn't have that body, we would never feel a hug. So of course, let's be grateful to have that body. Let's not be a little bitch and say, well, well what's the point of being here then? <laughs> it's fun. It's fun being here. There's challenges. There's challenges. This paradoxical state of swastya, where nothing belongs to me. The concept of owning something is not real. But you can still be grateful for living it, or you know, having it, like uh, interacting with an object, a person. profound wisdom of freedom where nothing belongs to no one where even our body is lent to us by nature and it will take it back let's not be little bitches about it that is fighting it's normal I'm talking about this because there's always this little fighting. <laughs> well, it's just childish. If I can't own it, then screw it. Possessive human, right? If we did not have this body, we could not feel hugs. It's a good enough reason to rejoice of having this body. If you want a much deeper experience of swastya, listen to yesterday's video. Because the class today is capitalizing on what we've learned yesterday. Just to make peace with the process. Find peace in loneliness. Find peace being with people. Find peace in every type of scenario. Good. That was for that reason. Next, more on incarnation. Consider that if you are grateful to have that body, because it allows you to experience a hug, imagine the possibility that your body is grateful that the universe lent it a consciousness so it can experience a hug. Cool one. The body, once we accept the wisdom that it's not ours, that it was just lent by nature, Then from the point of view of nature, the body is grateful to have a consciousness so it can experience a hug. So it can take a spoonful of a dessert that it enjoys. Can you conceive the possibility that your body is so glad that the heavens lend it a consciousness. 
from the point of the view of the body, the universe will take that consciousness back eventually. And when that happens, the body will go back to just being mass, submitted to physics and chemistry. Shiva's eternal wheel of transformation will make the mass back into sand, dust. But right now, the body is grateful that the universe lent it the consciousness so it can experience a hug, so it can feel the fur of your pet in its fingers. I don't have a pet. I know of some of your pet people. I'm more of a PlayStation handle people, but I hate. <laughs> I used to be an alcohol person, it's not the case anymore, but my body was not grateful for the sickness, it was grateful for the high, it was fun, it was still a kid in me, oh my god, maybe there's still a kid in me, video game, <laughs> it's a nice thing to contemplate that Nature is happy to be animated by consciousness, by energy, life as it can experience it. So let's rejoice of this collaboration. The body is grateful to be lent a consciousness by the universe and you are that consciousness. That just happens to be there. And you are grateful that nature lent you a part of its mass. For a moment, it will take it back. Shiva's eternal wheel of transformation will happen. But now, right now, is an opportunity. For your soul and your human to be lovers. Your soul and your human can be lovers. And that's why, like any ego, your soul and your body will build attachments to one another. Which is a good thing. It's not necessary for incarnation. Incarnation is a choice. You won't die if you mourn ownership of your body. You'll be grateful for the collaboration. So it, life will persist, don't worry. Incarnation is a choice. <sighs> Let's expand on this. Hopefully some of you have experienced expanded consciousness, whatever that means. And feel consciousness beyond just yourself. The same way that you are grateful to be lent a piece of nature. And your body is grateful to be offered a little pocket of consciousness, which is you yourself. Expand on everything. All of the consciousness of any conscious being, human, animal, insect, plants, and anything conscious is grateful to be offered some nature. And the whole of nature that is animated, we call it alive, is grateful for 
being offered that consciousness to animate it. And then it's not just about you. It's not just about little me. It's all things alive are living a, an experience, gratitude, an experience of gratitude that, which is shared amongst all living things, which is huge. How much Brahma has gratitude for Vishnu to receive it and how much Vishnu is grateful for Brahma to actually come down here. If you can contemplate all consciousness unifier, Prakam, and all nature as one thing, Shiva, if you will. And the merging of both. This gratitude is experienced absolutely everywhere. The gratitude of reincarnation is shared in every single animated piece of mass. Universal consciousness is amazed at the beauty of experiencing density and everything giving a hug to every other thing when it can. All the flavors that are tasted, are the, all the smells that are enjoyed or not, the curiosity of a child discovering every new little thing expanded at the universal scale where everything is so just amazed every new flavor once you understand swastya then you can live it for yourself regardless how much is unresolved of course regardless how much work you think is left to be done it teaches you something about this local collaboration of consciousness. Once you have that in your little personal swastya, you can project that feeling on everything and consider the possibility of the feeling of a curiosity of a child discovering every new little thing, making this terrible face biting in a lemon, this wonderful face eating the chocolate, like if everything in the universe felt this childish discovery, that's how it is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful that the entire universe, anywhere it has a chance to reach the point of Manasvin Utpalaka, which is where enough mind can be built in mass for consciousness to awaken in it. That's what Manasvin Utpalaka means process of the Nagas. It's, it's so f fun. <laughs> the gratitude in gigantic waves of gratitude flowing in the mass of planets, like entire ecosystems on Earth how much experience of greatness there is where everything can embrace 
this world and how the world is so happy to feel alive, to be set in motion, to, to be offered a will, the possibility of making choices. When mass animated by consciousness realize it is not obligated to just follow chemistry and physics. It's not a slave of simple natural laws anymore. There is still chemistry and physics. But then there's choice. It will do things not as it was imposed by the basic intention of nature. Mass will finally have an opportunity to live something else. Sensations. Not just mechanical operations. Sensations at many levels. Nature is so grateful to be offered consciousness. You are personally one local moment, one local event of that consciousness that the universe gave to nature. You have this opportunity to receive a part of nature for you to live and experience, but you are also part of that grace that Brahma gave to nature by localizing each little piece of consciousness he could. So you are a gift. You don't exist only for yourself. The Taoists would say the heavens and the earth are eternal because they don't exist for themselves. Well, somehow you are the heavens for an, a piece of earth. Somewhere, somehow, you are one little part of heaven for a little part of earth to receive. It is an exchange between heavens and earth that causes incarnation, being, an entity, an identity, but also an entity, a being. So you are a gift for whatever mass you animate. And in a way, see how important you are for that little piece of land to be more than a pocket of dirt for a moment. This is how you should see yourself as a gift to nature. As much as nature was offered to you for a little moment, you are offered to nature, providing Brahma and Vishnu an experience that without you would simply not be possible. You are the means through which a kiss can be given for a hundred years. You are the method through which a hug can be held for a hundred years, for a lifetime, whatever amount of years actually. It's romantic. Incarnation is a romantic phenomenon.
How could you be lonely if you have every little part of you cherishing each other? In one view of non-distinction, you are a single being. From supreme consciousness down to the deepest, darkest atom. But in this world of distinction and components and possible separation, every part of you is blessed to be offered to every other little part of you. Swastya brings first a terrible news that everything we dream of was a lie that you never were safe anyway <laughs> that strength and fate is the only option anyway but then when you've digested a bit of this terrible dharma you realize a beauty beauty in creation how much valuable you are to everything else as much as everything is valuable to you and you rejoice of having a body in that way you you see the point of being incarnate. And as you focus on yourself living that, which is swastya, you can, you can also go into a state of vishwa and be grateful that everything is embracing everything. The whole of consciousness rejoicing of the whole of nature as long as it lasts, then it will be done. And the whole of nature, rejoicing of any consciousness it is offered. Because that's how nature becomes more than just pieces of rock. We are opportunities of discovery. We are offered an opportunity of discovery ourselves, but we are that opportunity for something else, for others, for nature. And in this sense, Swastya is absolutely spectacular. Your most important lover is you. Your body is your little piece of land. And you are. You are the heavens for your body. That's what you are. You are the heaven for your body. You can only be wonderful. Make peace with it. Be happy. This contemplation brings some nostalgia of being one with all things. That local feeling of incarnation, it is lived at the universal scale. And it is especially noticed where there is life.
So it is beautiful everywhere it is experienced. That is, that is a great motivation to keep cultivating compassion. This feeling, swastya, should motivate you so much to keep practicing compassion. To continue just being the best version of yourself. The most humble version of yourself. The courageous part. The courageous part of you to do the work. To defeat the challenge of suffering resulting from attachments and property and other dreams like that. Because the beauty that results from all that work, this is the most spectacular thing. It is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for your time for these two classes on Swastya. The first being terrible on its revelation and this one was can be both for the soul and the body. See you Friday. <laughs>